In this video, I'll show you how to change a sprinkler timer box, and you'll see that it's not hard to do. Even going from one brand to another, the wire hookups and everything's generally the same. And this is not going to be how to program it, just how to replace it, because the programming part really needs to be a separate video, because that will change based on the model and the brand that you have. Hopefully you have the keys. If you don't, you can put a flathead screwdriver in and with some force you can turn it open. Some models like this one, you're gonna have to open a cover to find the wires, others will be exposed. Before you disconnect anything, be sure to take some pictures of what color wires go to what terminals. It makes it a lot easier later. Also write down what time the sprinklers would run and how long each station would run. So each valve or station runs off of two wires. Now they all hook up to COM, so that's that white wire there. Yours might be a different color, it's just whatever's hooked up to COM. And then I have seven other wires and each of those goes to the seven different valves in the sprinkler boxes. And all these wires are just extra wires that happen to be inside the sprinkler cable. They're just unused. Now depending on your timer, there are other wires that you might have hooked up. Some might be for a pump, if you need a pump to prime your sprinklers. You can see an extra terminal here called VT, MV. Right over here is auxiliary. That's like for lights or something. If you wanted to run something separate or, or different, you can do that with sprinkler timers. So after that, you can start disconnecting wires and unplugging it. To remove the wires, you just give the screw a slight turn and it'll slip right out. Most timer boxes will have a couple screws you need to unloose and then the top screw you slip up. It's kind of like a keyhole slot. You can see on the back the slot and the screw on top would slip right inside. So you just pull up and it comes out. Here's the new timer box and I need to pop out this knockout plug. And this PVC pipe fits right inside this pre-stamped hole. Now let's see if I can get away with using this same screw for this new keyhole slot. I'm gonna push in and down. And the screw does not come out far enough, so I'll give it a little bit of turn and try again. Push in and down, still not enough. in and down and it's secure. The other screw holes don't line up so I need to make a new hole here. I'll drill into the plastic and once I'm through it'll make a mark on the wall. Then I drill a small hole and put in the insert. And this really just needs two screws. There's no need to overdo it. So looking at these terminals, you can see that there's three of them labeled COM. It doesn't matter what COM wire goes where. You can put them all in the same terminal. You can mix them in different terminals. You're not gonna screw it up. You just make sure that the COM wires from the previous timer go into a COM slot on this timer. These terminals look different, but they operate basically the same way. I'm gonna undo the screw and you can see it open up. I put the wire in and tighten it, and that's it. And because I took pictures of the first timer box, I can easily match up which color wire goes in which slot. The one's gonna go back into one, the two to two to three to three, the four to fourth, and so on. And then my second wire set has another comm, I can put that here. Be aware that when you do this, if there's a lot of exposed copper, when you push these wires back in, they may cross each other. So if you have a lot of extra copper showing, you might want to clip some off so that when you push the wires back in, you're not going to cause a problem by crossing the wires. Before we close up the box, I need to remove this. It just ripped, so let's pry the battery out 
and remove the rest of the plastic. That just keeps the battery from draining its life while the product sits on the store shelf. So you can see right there on the display it says no AC. That's the battery powering that, but there's not enough power to run. So we plug it in and the display lights up. And that's it, that's everything to hook up the new timer. Now programming is a whole separate issue, especially with this one. This is a Wi-Fi, so you add software to the mix and it just makes things a tiny bit more complicated. I've used this one and I really like it. So if you wanna see how this timer box works, I'll show another video that shows me programming it and how it runs and all that kind of stuff. So I hope this has been helpful. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer. And that'll be it. Thanks for watching and take care guys.